So the topic of the today's lecture is the Earth's atmosphere, just part of the Earth's atmosphere because we are also going to talk about the Earth's atmosphere, certain phenomena next week. So uh, this week uh, what we are going to look at the more simple part of the problem. So uh, the atmosphere like in, uh, like we see it most days with clear sky, with sunshine, with well mixed atmosphere in the vertical direction. Uh, no temperature immersion. I will talk a little bit at the end of this lecture about the temperature immersion. So uh, most of our radio contacts go through the atmosphere. The effect of the atmosphere on radio waves is relatively small. But uh, uh, the distances covered by radio waves are large. So uh, even these small effects uh, bring some important, some important phenomena uh, in the atmosphere. So uh, what we are talking about here today. We are talking the gases uh, inside the atmosphere. M atmosphere of the Earth is mostly nitrogen at 78% constituents. Is a uh, molecular oxygen at 21%. Uh, uh, and it's uh, argon at around 1%. And this is dry. The dry constituents. Uh, plus, there are some trace gases. These trace gases may, there are some, some noble gases like neon, like uh, helium, very small quantities, uh, like CO2 that's also in relatively small quantities in the Earth atmosphere. So, uh, uh, mainly we are going to look at these gases, plus we have uh, some wet content. Uh, wet content, we have uh, water vapor. Uh, we have, uh, and about water vapor we are going to talk today. In the atmosphere we have uh, uh, water drops. And we are going to this next week about uh, what has water drops. And also uh, about water, we have water uh, crystals. Uh, in our language, snowflakes. <clears throat> Snow behaves in a similar way to water drop, droplets, uh, and we are going to see more in detail these things today. So today we are going to see the most important effects, and the most important effects are uh, in the dry atmosphere are water vapor, wave vapor also, uh, although this, this is water, but it's present also today. The air is quite warm, so we have lots of water wave vapor over there. Uh, we have uh, quite an effect of, out of oxygen. Oxygen has quite an effect. Less of an effect has nitrogen. Uh, why nitrogen has less of an effect on the atmosphere? Uh, the bond between the two nitrogen atoms is one of the strongest in chemistry. You know that it's very, very difficult to make, make compounds with nitrogen. So, uh, assimilating nitrogen in other formulas like making ammonia or nitrates, uh, it's very chemically very difficult. It could not be produced on an industrial scale up to perhaps 100 years ago with the Haber-Bosch process of producing ammonia out of uh, hydrogen and nitrogen. Because nitrogen, the biatomic nitrogen, is a mole molecule that's very difficult to split. To split and to have chem make a chemical components with other things. And for the same reason, it does not have resonances at that low frequencies. Uh, but now, talking about the resonances, we have to see what we are talking about. And... Uh, uh, for the resonances, I will try to show the effect with an uh, equivalent circuit to see what is actually going on. So an equivalent circuit of a capacitor, say, filled with air, 
to have here capacitor. Here we have some gas. This is say, air. And we look at the capacitance of this capacitor. What is now the equivalent circuit of this capacitor? The equivalent circuit is the vacuum capacitance. So let's denote it C0 uh, in vacuum. And this is always present, even if we have no gas in between. But if we have gases, we have different uh, components. And uh, these components of this gas have different resonances. And I can uh, uh, simplify these uh, resonances with uh, series tuned circuits. Like here I have C1, I have L1, I have R1 where uh, L1 and C1 uh, defi define both the frequency of this resonances, resonance and define the uh, strength of this resonance, the coupling, the coupling to the whole circuit. The larger uh, C and the smaller L is, the stronger the effect on the circuit. And R1 is the losses, the damping of this resonance. Every resonance have damping, has damping. And we have many of these resonances for a particular gas. R2, say we have here, uh, L2, we have C2. Uh, I may draw dots here, but then I have further resonances, say uh, C3, L3, R3, uh, C4, L4, R4, and so on. But uh, to find the resonant frequencies of this resonance, we have to look at the structure of the atoms uh, building up the molecules of air. And it is quite practical to split these resonances in two different regions. We have uh, resonances of the electron cloud around the nuclei of the atoms. And these are electron resonances. This happen in the UV region. Ultraviolet uh, ultra region of uh, wavelengths uh, for ultraviolet. Level. And then I have uh, molecular resonances when the much heavier nuclei of the molecules may oscillate, may change the distance between two nuclei. So I have here molecular resonances. This thing happened in the infrared region. Uh, what does that means, uh, mean in practice for us? For us, uh, this means that uh, uh, for X-rays, uh, we only see the vacuum capacitance of this capacitor. There is no known dielectric for X-rays. It's very difficult to build lenses for X-rays. It's very difficult to build, build mirrors for lenses because we have no change in the refraction index. Uh, in the visible region, we see the ultraviolet resonances. This already have an effect. Air already has a very small uh, refraction index for uh, the uh, uh, visible region. So for the visible light, uh, so we have air at one bar pressure. Uh, the, its refraction index is slightly more than one, 1.00015. One po uh, zero 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 and this is the effect of this two capacitors. This don't no long, not yet have an effect, these two. Uh, for the infrared resonances, 
uh, we will see all the resonances, all of the available resonances for radio. So for radio or microwave, visible light, say visible light, what, what I mean with that? I mean, say, wavelength uh, uh, about 0.5 micrometers. Uh, uh, or, uh, say, in the region between uh, 0.2 micrometers up to 3 or 4 micrometers. So, say, let's, let's say this, uh, maybe I write, rewrite it here. So, wavelength between uh, 0.3 micrometers up to 3 micrometers. This is where we see the effect. Uh, for the infrared uh, region, we see all of these resonances in microwave and radio. So radio, microwaves, uh, with a frequency, here we usually don't talk about wavelengths, uh, uh, we have to talk about frequencies, uh, for frequencies below 100 gigahertz approximately. Frequencies below 100 gigahertz. Uh, the refraction index of air, so again we have air at one bar, we have the refraction index of air is 0 0.0003 approximately. I should write in both cases approximately here. So, approximately. It changes. It changes both with uh, temperature, it changes with uh, time, it changes with the location on the Earth. Uh, uh, we will see later on, I found the map here showing the world distribution of this refraction index. Well, I will, later on, I will explain the units here. So what is now the, the effect of these resonances here? Uh, if I plot a single resonance, so a single circuit, say Cn, Ln, and Rn. What does this, a single resonance bring to the refraction index? Uh, if I plot here the refraction index, N, if I plot here the frequency, and I will uh, draw just the significant part of the frequency, so I'll not draw the complete axis of the frequencies. So, the refraction index around the resonance makes us, makes us make such a jump. And it drops by a particular value because Below the resonance frequency, if this is uh, uh, resonance, so this is, this here is now Fn, the nth resonance of the many we have. Uh, uh, the refraction index makes a drop. Why? Because above the resonance frequency, we don't see this circuit. Below this frequency, we see the capacitor. Below this frequency, we see, still see the capacitor, and the capacitor increases our refraction index, slows down the radiation. Above, the effect is very small. Close to the resonances, up here we see the inductive effect of this inductor, uh, the refraction index in decreases. And here, the refraction index increases due to approaching the resonance, so the, the effective capacitor gets higher. Uh, this is uh, for the real part. A real part of n. But I also have losses. I could de describe losses with an imaginary part of n. And I see the highest losses at the resonance. Well above the resonance, this so whole circuit has no effect. Below, Far below the resonance, this whole circuit has no effect. Only at the resonances we see uh, the highest losses, and I could say this curve is 
and imaginary. Now, with what sign we have to still discuss the sign? I just draw the draw losses with the positive sign here. What is now the result for the complete atmosphere if I uh, uh, include the whole uh, equivalent circuit, say, of the molecules that make up my atmosphere? Uh, I will try to make a drawing here, but. Here I take the logarithmic scale of the frequency, because I have to draw at many different frequencies. And here I plot n. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, at uh, infinite frequencies, we, have, we should reach n is equal to 0. There are no dielectrics for x-rays. Uh, this two, two should be parallel, but I'm not drawing very well this moment. So. Should draw these two lines more parallel. No, still, no, still, I'm not good. I'm not good this morning. Drawing two parallel lines. Uh, what happens? For X rays, I'm here. I'm on unity. Then I have some UV resonances. Then I have the visible window, and the, uh, then I f find infrared resonances. They may be of different, uh, different intensity. Some may be very strong, uh, some may be weak, weaker. And this happens for all media. So I have here UV resonances. I have here infrared uh, electron resonances. I have here molecular resonances. Uh, Infrared molecular resonances. UV electron resonances. Uh, here I said I reach unity in the X-ray region. I have them here. For X-rays, I almost have no dielectrics available. Uh, this region here is called the visible window. If I plotted the losses on the same diagram, the losses would look something like this. I have a strong resonances. I have larger losses. I have almost no losses here. Then I have some loss here and some loss here. And I have very little losses here in the radio and microwave. Radio and microwave say below, here the frequency is below 100 gigahertz. Uh, visible window, uh, uh, as I said, is from uh, 3 micrometers on this side, longer wavelength, is larger than lambda zero in free space, is larger than 0.3 micrometers. That's the reason why we can get visible lights to the, down to the surface of the Earth. And we can use radi radio and microwaves. But there are regions that are of very little use because the atmosphere is opaque. And that actually happens. What is uh, now, since we are interested in radio mainly, with this course on antenna cell propagation with radio, we want to see the first resonances. Where do these first resonances occur? Uh, and I will redraw part of this plot just to see the interesting detail now. So, 
So if I plot here n, if I plot here uh, the frequency, say I take again the logarithm of the frequency to have a more complete scale. Uh, I have quite a stable n of 1.003 for a radio here. And uh, the first uh, resonances I meet uh, are at uh, a very small resonance caused by the water vapor at 22 gigahertz. Already at 22 gigahertz. And say this was not known in the Second World War. In the Second World War, uh, Americans fighting the Japanese were developing radar. They were very successful with their radar. But uh, trying to build a radar with a higher resolution, they tried K-band radar. K-band is the, uh, the old uh, designation for the uh, band from 18 to 26 gigahertz. And this K-band radar didn't work. They didn't know that water vapor was the problem for the poor operation of this radar, poor range of this radar. And uh, also, they didn't know that in the tropics, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, you have warm air, you have lots of water vapor. So uh, it depends on the quantity of the water vapor here. And uh, uh, they didn't know that. And the, this radar didn't work. A slightly stronger resonance is at 60 gigahertz, caused by oxygen, molecule of oxygen. And that is always there. Oxygen is almost always present. Presence. The next resonance is also caused by oxygen at uh, 120 gigahertz. And then I have a stronger resonance of the water vapor. Vapor, not uh, ice, uh, not drops, uh, raindrops or something. Like that, at 183 gigahertz. What about losses? Uh, at uh, below 100 gigahertz, the highest loss is given by oxygen. Oxygen here gives a loss of around uh, minus 14 dB per kilometer. That's a lot. That's a lot. And at 120 gigahertz, this is minus 5 dB per kilometer. Water vapor on the other side, uh, at least at our at moderate latitudes where there is no much not much water in the air, water vapor gives a loss of just uh, minus 0.02 dB per kilometer. But if you multiply this figure by the 100 kilometer radar range, is 20 dB in that direction and 20 dB back. That's 40 dB less signal that kills the radar. It's enough to kill the radar. And this is for 7.5 grams of water vapor per cubic meter. Let's say that the air itself, the air itself is about uh, the density of the air uh, dry at one bar. It's about uh, 1.3 kilograms per cubic meter at the pressure of one bar. That's the atmosphere. So this water vapor is literally a small part of all the gases, a small part of the mass of the, all the ga gases available. But it, it, still, uh, it still produces quite a notable effect at 22 gigahertz. This thing may grow to much higher values in the tropics, where the air is warm, where the, uh, uh, the air is warm, where there is lots of vapor in the air, because it, it needs to be vapor. Uh, if we look at higher altitudes, this, uh, water, uh, this water vapor content drops very quickly. Not because of the lower pressure of the air, but because of the lower temperature. The saturation density, uh, the saturation quantity of pressure, saturation pressure of water vapor in the air before it condenses to raindrops, uh, drops very quickly with temperature. 
So if we have colder air at higher altitudes, we have almost no water vapor overturn. Water vapor is only significant at low indices. So uh, if we try to understand, so uh, let's say that uh, if I uh, talk about dry air, what will be now its refraction index of the dry air? Its refraction index will be uh, index n will be 1 plus some delta n, and we will talk further on about this delta n, uh, and the barometric equation, so E minus uh, h over big H, where h is the altitude, so this is sea level. Attitude above and this is the barometric constant. For air. Uh, what are now the figures you can see from our discussion? So this delta n at sea level delta n is in the range of 0 0.00003. Uh, there have to be three zeros in front. So this is responsible for this small change of the refraction diff index. This change is very small. We are just thinking, we, we will see uh, in the next discussion how important this becomes because of a particular geometry of radio links. And h, the barometric constant, Barometric constant is about 8.5 kilometers. Where this point 8.5 kilometers becomes around 8 kilometers in winter and around 9 kilometers when the air is warmer in summer. With the warmer the air, the air expands. And that's the reason also why the barometric constant here this is the barometric equation written for the refractive index. Uh, it is not uh, the barometric constant for pressure because with altitude, both pressure and temperature of the air change, changes. Where the pressure drops, the density of the air drops. But where the temperature drops, the density of the air increases. And both, both of them uh, coupled together give this constant of 8.5 of kilometers. Uh, this is about the refraction index of for dry air. Uh, this thing, uh, this delta n, if we talk here about delta n that causes at sea level this change. Oh, one, here is one zero missing. One zero was missing here. Uh, 1.0003. One zero was missing here. This delta n up to 100 gigahertz only drops by minus 1%. So uh, up to 100% we meet just a weaker, some weaker resonances of both the water vapor and the, uh, okay, so sorry, I forgot here, the water vapor has a much taller resonance here. It also has a, and this thing is further growing, why? Because water vapor has its main resonances around 500 gigahertz. We are only seeing the first resonances, first few resonances at 183 gigahertz, at 22 gigahertz. And here we see the tail of those much larger resonances at 500 gigahertz. So this thing go, may go up to uh, perhaps 1000 dB per kilometer at 500 gigahertz. That becomes very, very large for water. But we only see these few first resonances over here. We are interested in the radio. Of course, radio becomes useless. Radio is useless, almost useless, above 100 gigahertz because we have lots of absorption in the atmosphere. I forgot to tell you about this. Yes, talking about water, water vapor. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the density of the water vapor drops very quickly with uh, altitude. 
So we have the same equation. We have the same equation. Uh, so n is due to water vapor is 1 plus delta n uh, e to the minus h over h, where I could call these quantities here dry. I will put the index dry and dry here. And I will put an index due to water here. Water, vapor, water, vapor here. W, I put the W here. So, so no, sorry, not, not in the numerator, in the denominator should be in the denominator. So big H should change. So this H dry for the, is 8.5 kilometers. But this H for water vapor is much smaller. Uh, H for water vapor is only about 1.5 kilometers. So water vapor already at the altitude of Triglau already disappears. There's no, no, no longer any effect from the water vapor. It's only important right above the sea surface, the water vapor. Uh, we have uh, in, the, in uh, our uh, calculations, uh, much software was written in the United States, and they also use a different unit. They don't, no, do, do not use this delta n. They use another unit for the dry constituent, so for dry air, or, or just for air, just for air, this, for this delta n, considering both effects. Uh, they use uh, parts per million here for this. So this delta n is given as capital N multiplied ti uh, ti times to the minus 6. So this is parts per million. And this is our new unit for this delta N. So I could rewrite the formula. Uh, so delta N is also uh, capital N divided by 1 million. Millionth of a part. So this N is for the Earth's atmosphere. N is around 300. 300 multiplied to 10 to the minus 6, we get 3 times 10 to the minus 4 of difference here. Uh, how this thing changes in the whole world, I didn't make copies for the whole classroom here. But you can see something from this diagram here. I only have two copies here. I need two copies. So, how does it change with the geographical location? Delta N, uh, so this N, large capital N, is very small in the polar regions. You see, polar regions are 290, just 290 over Antarctica because of the low temperatures. Delta N is also very, uh, this large N, capital N, is also very small in the Sahara Desert. There is no water over there. Uh, this N becomes very large in the tropics above the sea, 390. It becomes very large, say, it's also very large here in the Amazonian rainforest. Uh, we will see that, uh, for, uh, I will try to project this using the computer later on. But now I had, just, I had just to go on with my discussion. So this thing actually changes, changes with latitude. The average value of this n changes with, uh, with the, our position on the globe. Where are we? Of course, tropical dry regions may go this thing up to 400. It will go, it will go below 300 uh, in the Sahara Desert. So what is now our complete formula for uh, the refraction index. The complete formula for refraction index, taking into account both dry and wet part, the refraction index now will be 1 plus dry part is delta n dry, uh, e to the minus uh, altitude over barometric constant dry, uh, plus uh, the change uh, delta n for water, for the wet part, uh, e to the minus uh, h over 
altitude over h, a barometric constant for the wet part. So both do contribute to the refraction index. Both, uh, both uh, contributions are quite small. So now you may ask me, why are you making our life so complicated with this thing? Why are you considering these small, very, very small changes? Well, the problem is the geometry of our radio link. This delta n plays no role if you com communicate with space up there. If you go straight up through the atmosphere, this delta n has minimum effects. Maybe the only effect we see with uh, satellite communication, we see the, uh, the additional losses uh, introduced by water vapor, introduced by oxygen, because we have to go through the atmosphere. So we have no satellite links at 60 gigahertz, of course. There's no such thing. But for ground communication, uh, our problem is actually here. We have uh, two antennas for our link. And these two antennas now, they're high, the height of the transmitter. And we have the height of the receiver. We have the horizontal distance. So this horizontal distance here is two, uh, around two orders of magnitudes larger than uh, the height of the transmitter and the height of the receiver. If you are talking about uh, radio links in our mountain countryside, say this uh, height of the transmitter, height of the receiver, maybe in the range of one kilometer on our mountains. If we have to build towers uh, and we don't want to have the Babylonian tower here, not, nor we don't want to build Burj Al Arab from the Emirates, uh, then, uh, then we are much less than one kilometer here. Uh, on the other hand, the horizontal distance may be in the range of 100 kilometers. So this drawing is not to scale right now. It's not to scale, it's expanded in the vertical region. And our radio ray will be almost horizontal here. I say almost horizontal because it is not. And we have to see what happens due to this changing of the refraction index. In fact, I should write here that this n is, uh, there was nothing wrong with this equation. This n is actually a function of my altitude. What happens now here? What happens, and I have to erase part of the board uh, to continue to go on. Nitrogen, as I said, has very little effect because the molecular bond within the nitrogen atoms in the uh, molecular nitrogen is very strong, so resonances are way high, high up with frequency. Uh, we have no molecular uh, resonances with argon because argon is an atomic gas. It does not form molecules. There are single argon atoms of this uh, noble gas, and uh, that's the reason why we have no molecular resonances here. So <laughs> let's try to work out the physics first. Physics first, what happens? So I have now to redraw the picture from over there, but stay real. Stay real about what is going on. Considering all the effects and considering the geometry, the geometry is very, very shallow here. Very, not very, very high mountains and a large distance in between. So what really happens in this case? So I have my countryside here with two mountains, with two antennas of my microwave link. Uh, 
I shall, will try to draw now wave fronts here. Uh, I will not draw wave fronts to scale, just to explain what is going on. So the refraction index, if I draw it here, the refraction index here is actually dropping with frequency. Uh, this is again not to scale, just to uh, show this drop with altitude. If we go further up with altitude, uh, this term drops and also this term drops. What does that mean? It means that if, we, if I have a smaller refraction index here, I will have a larger wavelength. If I have a larger index here, I will have a smaller wavelength. So if I draw wave fronts here, wave fronts will not be equally spaced with altitude. Now this is not very well. Okay. So wave fronts are spaced by the wavelength. Wavelength lambda. And you see that lambda is growing with, with, with frequency because the refraction index is dropping. Uh, so for lambda, I should say that uh, lambda as a function of height here is now uh, lambda 0 in vacuum divided by n, which is a function of h. The wavelength is not constant. It's a little change. Uh, less than, much less than 1% change. But there is a change that has an effect. And if I try to draw now these triangles, you know, extend this wave front down, If I extend this thing, of course, my equation for lambda is no longer valid down here in the air. But I see that uh, uh, this ray here now follows a curve, a curvature, a circle, follows a circle. And this circle at this point has a certain radius. I will use the capital R here. Uh, at a higher altitude, so if this is our altitude, if we were here at altitude 0, this is not really our at altitude h, I will have lambda dh, if I wrote it here dh, uh, here lambda plus d lambda. Lambda will grow. Uh, here you see that both triangles, so this triangle here from the center, this is not the center of the Earth, Let, let's make it clear. This is the center of our circle uh, uh, that tracks the, our ray. Uh, our ray goes along a curve. The curve is actually a circle with the radius r. So r over lambda, lambda is here, is now equal to uh, r plus dh here, r plus dh here, divided by lambda plus d lambda. Lambda plus d lambda is this side here. D, uh, this side divided by this side is the same as this side divided by this side, from similar triangles, triangles that have the same common angle here. Uh, I could further extend this equation that this is also dh over d lambda, because if these two make the same ratio, this make the same ratio, also dh over d lambda makes the same ratio. And now what is uh, what I would like to calculate here is, I would like to calculate the radius of this uh, curvature. Uh, our radio, race is, uh, radio ray is actually tracking. So if I try to calculate the curvature, so r, r is now equal to what? r is now equal to lambda times dh over d lambda. 
Now, lambda, uh, we said that it's a function of uh, height. Uh, here is refraction index. So I should uh, uh, try to make, uh, try to find a derivative over h of d lambda. Uh, how about making this derivative? So now it's uh, lambda uh, times, uh, I can say here dh, uh, uh, so if I write, rewrite here the expression for lambda uh, over d lambda, uh, so let's try to calculate this d lambda first. Try to calculate it. So I'm making this derivative. Uh, this is minus lambda 0. n of h is now in the numerator, uh, in the denominator, is n squared of h, making the derivative of 1 over x. Derivated is 1 over minus 1 over x squared. And finally, I have to make the derivative of n of h over h. So n of h, as I said, n of h. Uh, is now 1 plus e to the minus h over capital H, uh, delta n. I forgot delta n here. I forgot delta n. So if I make the, the derivative d, so here should be dn of h over dh. Uh, I should calculate this derivative and then the ma we make the, the break because the clock is approaching the break. So let's try to make this derivative. So d uh, n over d h is, this thing cancels out. I'm left with delta n. I am der derivating the exponent function is the same function, e to the minus h over h. And then I have further two make a derivative of the exponent here. The exponent is minus h over h. This derivative uh, over h is here multiplied by minus 1 over big H. Uh, and we have this derivative. We can put it uh, right here, uh, where we need it, right here, where we did this uh, where we need it in our equation, and we will do. We will. I will rewrite this next hour, so I don't mess around. I will, I will write the same, but at the very least, but uh, just we make the break here to stay on time with the lecture. You will see that the result is surprising. What we get out of our derivation.